Hello and welcome to Hollywood Headlines. I'm your host Kevin Lynch and on tonight's episode we're going to be talking about the latest news in Hollywood, starting with the new docuseries Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Hollywood Headlines starts right now. Before we get into the show, I'd really like to take a moment to thank Maya El Habashi for being today's guest. On Sunday, March 17th, the highly anticipated four part docuseries Quiet on Set The Dark Side of Kids TV was released on Max. The series focuses on Nickelodeon child stars, specifically Drake Bell from Drake and Josh, as he recounts for the first time publicly the abuse he endured while he was on set at the hands of his acting coach, Brian Peck. Allegations were also raised in the series about Dan Schneider's treatment of major stars such as iCarly actress Jeanette McCurdy, Ariana Grande from Victorious, and Jamie Lynn Spears from Zoe 101, and how he sexualized the stars and the content of the shows. The allegations made in this show led to a response from Nickelodeon to US Weekly stating, quote, Though we cannot corroborate or negate allegations of behaviors from productions decades ago, Nickelodeon, as a matter of policy, investigates all formal complaints as part of our commitment to fostering a safe and professional workplace environment free of harassment or other kinds of inappropriate conduct. Schneider also addressed allegations of misconduct in a YouTube video where he apologized for his actions and treatment of those in his shows. Mai, have you seen these series? Yes, I actually did watch them. Oh, okay. It's not the first time like this happened anyway, so right. I really wanted to see like what's new. Yeah. In this stuff of, like, you know, going on. Yeah, I agree. I've heard about this um, this thing happening in the past, but I haven't really heard too much coverage on it up until the docu series was released, and that's when I really began to see more and more about what Dan Schneider did and what um I forget his first name, but what uh, Peck did mm -hmm. as well. And it was just horrible, horrible things that they did. And I do not support any of that. It's, it's absolutely terrible what happened. And I just feel bad that they were like, that they, I feel like they couldn't do, like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm still speechless over that. And I've been really trying to watch those clips, but it's just so hard to get through just because it's such sensitive and disturbing content. Mm -hmm. So I, with that being said, I, sh I, sh I, I might not watch, like, I will watch it, but it will be really, really hard to get through. It's on HB, it's on Max, right? It's on yeah, Max. it's on Max. I, I said that earlier, I should remember, but it's on Max. I will, I will, I will attempt to watch it. It'll just be really hard for me to get through it, so, yeah. yeah. I feel, I feel people should watch it. People and should definitely people watch should this, watch it. yeah. You know what's actually going on in the industry? Because it's power up use, people, like, empower telling these little kids, you know, if your opportunity, like, it's finally here, if you mess it up, there's thousands of other kids. And so little kids don't want to, you know, tell. And so right. that's what happened. And then we get, like, toxic adults from these type of behaviors because they grow up and they get messed up from all the trauma they went through. So maybe it should be more regulations and stuff like that. One million percent. To protect children exactly and i think the good thing about this show is that it'll bring light um and kind of bring a voice to other people who might be experiencing this experiencing the same thing and maybe have a reason to like go against like producers who are creating this similar toxic environment in other sets which i think that was the main goal and i think they did that really well from stuff i've seen before and by the way i do not think he's sorry i don't think he's yeah sorry. Def, i think he got not. caught out and then he was like Oh my God, let me like fix it quickly by saying you're sorry. He's not it bad. felt very forced so. and rushed, yeah. Yes. A new adaptation of The Cat in the Hat will be opening in theaters on March 6, 2026. The film will star Bill Hader as the voice of The Cat in the Hat and includes many other well-known stars. Warner Brothers Pictures Animation and Dr. Seuss Enterprises officially announced the casting on Monday. Quinta Brunson, Bone Yang, Zochi Gomez, Matt Berry, and Paula Pell were revealed as other members of the cast. 
Erica R Rivinoja and Alessandro Carloni are directing and writing, and Jared Stern and Daniela Mazzucato are serving as producers. Bill Dimashki, president of Warner Brothers Pictures Animation, said, quote, We are overjoyed to partner with our friends at Dr. Seuss to take audiences of all ages on an adventure into the beloved world of the cat in the hat, end quote. Susan Brandt, president and CEO of Dr. Seuss Enterprises and Hater, will executive produce the movie as well. Mai, are you excited for this movie? Yes, I am actually pretty excited. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. So I'm Egyptian. I never I never grew up watching it. So I had to, so okay. I had to read it as a grown up. And honestly, that kind of gives me a little bit of the creeps, but I like that. I Interesting. Like okay. So <laughs> I wanna see how it goes. Is it gonna be like creepy at the end or is it gonna be like a little children type of thing? Um, but I'm really excited for that. People will always complain about everything, so, you know. People always like to hate. People always like to hate, yeah. Yes, but overall, it's a, it's a remake, so usually those are questionable. Sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's so not good. I did not want to curse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you did. No, literally, I think it's going to be so good, mainly because of this huge cast listing. I mean, yeah. Bill Hader as Cat in the Hat. I remember one SNL clip where, like, Pete Davidson played, like, it was like a Green Eggs and Ham sketch, and I was like, Bill Hader would be so good as Cat in the Hat, and I'm ashamed that they didn't do that on SNL, but I'm glad he's actually getting to do it in his own film. Like, literally top tier casting. Also, Quinta Brunson having so much comedy chops and that much experience with the with the um, comedy industry. Just those that dynamic, I'm really looking forward to as well. Um, so Chi Gomez, she was incredible in Doctor Strange. I think it was on Dancing on the Stars as, and the Stars as well. Um, Dancing with the Stars. Sorry. Um, so that's going to be good as well. Maybe there's like a dance montage. I haven't seen the 2006 movie or the, um, I haven't seen like the animated special or so long. I don't even remember reading the book. I know, guys, I'm a fake fan. I'm a fake fan. What can I say? Um, but do you, will you see this when it comes to movie theaters? Yes. So if it stays child friendly, I'm taking my baby brother. But <laughs> if it goes somewhere else, then I'm definitely going with my bigger brother. Yeah, I have a feeling it'll have to be like what? PG? PG 13 sounds a little intense. Like it definitely won't be rated R. Like that's a little crazy. But it'll be G or PG. So yeah. But anyways, when we come back from the break, we will be talking about Olivia Rodrigo's Guts Deluxe album. Hollywood Headlines will be right back. Well, for all of you Olivia Rodrigo fans, you're finally in luck. In the midst of a performance during her world tour, she announced the deluxe version of her album, which will be coming out March 22nd, called Guts Spilled. This will include five bonus tracks labeled Obsessed, Girl I've Always Been, Scared of My Guitar, Stranger, and So American. In addition, she announced that the music video for Obsessed is releasing at 9 p.m. on March 21st. Even though the song got leaked and she recently performed it on tour, fans are still on the edge of their seats waiting for the release. Rodrigo has a history of edgy music videos and fans are eager to see the media surrounding the deluxe album. Mai, what do you think we can suspect from these new songs? Um, so for the video, I feel it's gonna be a lot of purple and a lot of red. Very true, it, yeah. She is, but I feel like she's that era of like coming out finally like exploring more and I feel the purple is like her color this season so I feel like it's gonna be a lot of those in colors and then in music I feel it's gonna be more edgier and more vulnerable as yeah. well because she is now I believe like she's 21 so she can yeah go all out. I can't believe she's uh, 21 she I, like I feel like we've kind of grown up with her when she was on like Disney Channel back in the day it's just crazy to see hear like She's 21. Like, she that's a crazy thing to think. But no, I agree with everything you just said. Like, I especially think that with her, like, album covers and her overall, like, set design on tour. Like, I remember her, her um, sour tour. Like, it was, like, very light blue, very, like, pop, very bright. And now it's just more darker and edgier kind of mm -hmm. set. So it's definitely kind of leaning into the themes of her songs more often. So, yeah. Do you think she'll continue this trend or kind of go in a different direction at all? I feel she will grow into that trend. She is trying to explore herself for sure. Definitely, but yeah. I feel already the trend right now is uh, a little bit like rock in, in style of yes. the music um, and the styling of the outfits and all of that. So I'm expecting that. Uh, plus, I feel like 
uh, Sabrina Carpenter is also like bringing hype to a certain style as well. So I feel yeah. they're both gonna like emerge within that fairy kind of, but maybe she's gonna be the edgy fairy, like a dark edgy fairy type of thing. I agree, yeah. I um, I just saw, I remember seeing Olivia Rodrigo's performance on SNL. Guys, I love to keep bringing up SNL. I, it's, it's, you can't stop me, there's no filter on that one. Um, so literally she performed on SNL and I saw like the apps was set design and every single intention with like how she moved, how the background movers performed as well. I haven't really seen any concert footage, so I hope what was seen on SNL kind of translate into her concerts because that would be a really cool concept. It gets people engaged like that. And it's just like some like she's doing something that a lot of other artists aren't doing, kind of making her concerts feel like an immersive music video, which I think is really, really cool. So well in the meantime, Kansas City tight end Travis Kelsey is hosting a game show. Yes, you heard that right, you guys. Travis Kelsey is in talks to host an Amazon video reboot of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Kelsey has made it no secret that he plans to have an off-field career once he retires from the NFL. While this deal isn't set in stone yet, Kelsey is staying busy with football to make it to the Super Bowl for a third time in a row, dubbed by a three-peat by Kelsey. This won't be the first show Kelsey has had a hosting gig on TV, though. He previously hosted Catching Kelsey back in 2016 for the USA Network. While the announcement has received mixed feedback, it will be exciting to see where the show goes and how Kelsey puts his own spin on the game show. Mai, do you plan to watch the reboot of this popular TV show? I am. I am really cool, excited yeah. to watch it. I love seeing little kids <laughs> and like adults interact. It's I, such a unique dynamic, right? It, it yeah. is. Especially <laughs> when the kid make you feel like so little in yourself, like you're dumb. It's like, okay. Uh, but yeah. also I want to see him because like in football he goes like, I believe he goes like more, 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 or like, or he's so like intense. He's like very intense. Yeah. So imagine a child like just this. seeing him. Like he's very like I've seen him on like talk shows and stuff uh -huh. like that. Like he's very personal, very kind, very friendly. So it's just interesting seeing him like him just being Travis Kelsey in his real life mm -hmm. versus him in a football stand, like football stand, football field. Um, that's just really see interesting seeing those two different dynamics. So it will it will be fun. Maybe he'll bring that like. Uh, in, edge in, or something. Edge, I don't know That's been a recurring it. theme, just like everyone being edgy today for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch any of the other vari variations of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yes, I've watched one with, I forgot his name. He does the Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Uh, one of episodes that he was in it, and I, that's the one that I remember right now. Like someone on like Jimmy was, Fallon's was, team. He, yeah, he was in one of the Steve teams. Higgins, maybe. No, no, it was a kid with him. And, oh, and then, like, and then they were brought on for a segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yes, yeah. That would be really cool to see as well. But when we come back from the break, we will be playing "Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader?" Hollywood headlines will be right back. Travis Kelsey is making headlines after a Super Bowl win as he is set to host a spinoff of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Although some of his old tweets indicate that perhaps he's not smarter than a fifth grader, we're going to commemorate the occasion by playing our very own version of the popular TV game show. Mai, are you ready to play? I am. I will be smarter, <laughs> <laughs> We hope so. Let's see. You will have five questions to answer, and those will start right now. Good luck to me. Good luck to you. <laughs> good yes, luck good luck, Maya. You got this. <laughs> You're going to do so well. All righty, here's our first question. Who was the first person to step on the moon? Uh, Neil Armstrong. Is it Neil Armstrong? It is Neil Armstrong. Congratulations. You got that question thank you, right. Thank you, thank you. Moving right along to the second question. What is the process of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly called? Oh, that's metamorphosis. Wait, what was that? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, is that your final answer? That is going to be my final answer. All right, let's see if that's correct. That is metamorphosis, correct. Thank you, thank you. Maybe two for two, all righty. Third question, what is the capital of France? Ooh, that's a tough question. I know. Paris. Paris, all righty, let's see if it's Paris. And it's Paris, great job, three for three. Question four, how many inches are in a foot? So you little use a gotta use math there, you know. Oh yeah, math. <laughs> I actually love math, everybody. It's my favorite subject. It's twelve twelve foot. Twelve 12 feet? Let's 12. see if it's 12 feet. Oh, no, 12 inches. Oh, 12 inches? 12, inches. 12. It says 12. We'll give you the points. Four for four. Thank you. Four for four. And your fifth and final question is this. Mm. What is the tallest mammal on Earth? 
you know, you all have seen it in what you call it. Oh my God, I forgot the, the movie that I really, really like that makes chocolate. What's, what's his name? Willy Wonka. He, Willy Wonka. Willy he Wonka. Had, he had to milk that giraffe because he needed a giraffe milk. <laughs> so that's the awesome. But So is it the Willy Wonka giraffe specifically? No, it's just a giraffe. Oh, it's just it, a giraffe. Okay, cool. But, you know. But honestly, I feel like that his giraffe was is so tall. tall. So was... tall. Anyways, gang sidetracked. Is it a giraffe? It is a giraffe. You got all those questions correct. Yay! I'm a fifth grader, everybody. The Willy Wonka giraffe is so proud of you right and, now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's the I forget to the me. name. What was the name? I don't even know. I'll find out after. Mm -hmm. Anyways, well, if anyone was playing along and got all the answers correct, congrats. You are smarter than a fifth grader and probably Travis Kelsey, too. Hollywood Headlines looks forward to the football star's debut on the game show then. Well, that's all we have for tonight, but make sure to come back next week for the latest news in Hollywood. A big thank you to Maya El-Habashi for coming to today's show. I'm Kevin Lynch. Have a great weekend, Millersville.